Good morning, everyone. I'm reading a book by Sheryl Sandberg. Sheryl Sandberg is the C, uh, CEO of Facebook, a Jewish woman, and she suffered a terrible tragedy. She lost her husband a, a number of years ago, and she's written a number of books of dealing with the grief. And her latest book is called Option B. And Option B, she talks about resilience and being able to overcome challenges and adversity in life. And she talks about the three P's of resilience. He says, what is it that holds people back from overcoming their grief? And she says there are three Ps that cause a person to fall into a state of depression. And people who can deal with these three Ps are much more successful in overcoming their grief. And what are the three Ps? The first one is personal. She says when we take our tragedies personal, when we start blaming ourselves for whatever happened, and she talked about how she would blame herself in the beginning for the death of her husband. We have to not personalize what happened to us. We, have to, we, have to, we can't blame ourselves and feel guilty for whatever circumstances befell us. The second piece, she says, is pervasiveness. Sometimes we feel that what happened is so bad that it pervades everything in our life and nothing in our life is good anymore. And we have to be able to say, yes, this is terrible what happened, but there's still many other areas of my life that are very good. And I have to remember that and not just think that this is all pervasive and therefore nothing, everything is black and dark and, and, and terrible in my life. The third piece, she says, is permanence. We have to realize that whatever it is, it's not permanent. What we're going through, we'll, we'll overcome it. We'll be able to uh, rise up again and therefore not think of it as a permanent thing, but realize tomorrow's another day. There's always hope for the future. In this week's parsha, we have a story of lack of resilience. It's the story of Hagar, and we actually read it in Rosh Hashanah, it's the headliner of the year. It's the story of Hagar who sent out with her lad, with her son Yishmael, into the, into the desert with one flask of water. And the Torah tells us in this week's parasha, the water runs out. And the, the child is crying for water, and the child is dying. And the Torah says, Hagar says, I cannot watch my child die. Al Arab and Mos I can't watch this. So she goes away from a distance and leaves the child to die of thirst on his own. This is Ishmael. And suddenly she hears a voice of an angel that says, what is, what is going on, Hagar? What happened to your child? Why did you abandon your, your child in his hour of need? Go back and lift up the child and hold on to the child. And she goes back and lifts up the child and suddenly it says, Vayifkach Elokim Etenad. God opened her eyes and suddenly the well water in the desert. And she gives her child Ishmael to drink and saves his life and she lives happily ever after. And the rabbis point out something fascinating. They say the word Vayifkach is not the typical word for opening the eyes. Usually to open you say Vayiftach. Here it says Vayifkach. Vayifkach is from Pakach, understanding. So the rabbis say something beautiful. They say it's not that God provided a miracle and created a well. The well was there all along. But in her state of depression and panic and fear, she couldn't see the well that was right there. And God had to only open her eyes and realize the solution was right in front of her. And therefore, the story teaches us a very important lesson that sometimes when we throw up our hands in despair, and we fall into that state of thinking this is a permanent problem, or this is all pervasive, or this is a problem that's personal, it's my responsibility, I did something wrong, I stopped blaming myself. We fail to find the solutions that are right before our eyes, but in, we fail to see them because we're so absorbed in our own state of grief and sadness. And therefore God has to open our eyes to realize that the solution, the well of water, is right before our eyes. General Montgomery once said, the difficult we do immediately. The impossible takes a little bit longer. The Jewish mentality is nothing's impossible. We can do anything. And we've been through so much as a people and we've only survived because we knew that with God's help there's always hope, there's always faith in tomorrow. And that's the secret and the key to resilience. You may have seen as a kid the cartoons of the coyote and the roadrunner. So the coyote is running after the, the, the roadrunner, he wants to eat him up. And at one point the roadrunner hides and the coyote runs to the edge of a cliff and he runs off the cliff and he's running in midair and suddenly he turns back and he sees the Roadrunner is smiling at him from behind the rock and he realizes he's in trouble. And suddenly he looks down and whoop, the coyote goes crashing down based on the laws of gravity to his death. And we laughed and chuckled as kids, but it holds a very deep lesson. Why doesn't the coyote fall immediately? He's running in midair. 
He, only when he looks back and realizes that the roadrunner outsmarted him, and he looks down and he sees, uh-oh, I'm suspended in midair, and the laws of gravity are going to cause me to fall, only then he falls. As long as he doesn't look down, and as long as he doesn't look back, he doesn't fall. It's when we look back and we start looking down and we feel we're lost, that's when we actually fall. But if we look forward and we look up, then we can keep on running and defy the laws of gravity.